Hey guys, welcome to a little weekend vlog. Spend the afternoon with me while I make this easy chocolate trifle recipe. And we're also gonna do a little home decor makeover. I installed some peel and stick wallpaper recently and I'm gonna show you the before and after as well as this delicious chocolate dessert that you are seriously gonna love. So let's get started. It's Saturday today when I'm filming this, so I thought it'd be fun to make a trifle together. I showed this chocolate dessert in a video, I think it was my last video, because I made it for my birthday, and it's basically layers of chocolate cake, chocolate pudding, and whipped cream, and then sometimes you can put other things in it too, like sometimes people will put chopped up chocolate bars, or you know, candies, or sprinkles. I also really think raspberries are really good, layered in between the chocolate and the whipped cream. It just adds this little bit of freshness and a pretty pop of color so it's a very customizable dessert and it's great for the holiday season coming up because it serves a lot and even though it's very easy to make it really has a lot of like wow factor when you present it so I'm going to show you how I make it I promise it's very very easy. So for the cake, we're gonna start with two tablespoons of ground flax seeds and mix that with six tablespoons of water. Give that a stir and set it aside to thicken. Then I'm gonna fluff up my flour with a spoon. This helps to aerate it so it's not so dense and I'm gonna add one and three quarters of a cup to a bowl along with one teaspoon of salt. Then comes the cacao powder, which is gonna make this cake nice and chocolatey. You need three quarters of a cup of cacao and I like to sift it in with one teaspoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda for exactly the reason you see here. It does tend to get a little clumpy. So just use the back of your spoon to push it through the sifter and that way everything is well combined. Add two cups of sugar, whisk, and set aside. For the wet ingredients, you'll need one cup of soy milk, half a cup of coconut oil, and a teaspoon, nope, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Add your thickened vegan egg that we made out of the flax seeds and mix that all together. And the last step is to add boiling hot water. One cup of boiling hot water helps to bloom the cacao and make it really flavorful and delicious. We're gonna bake this for about 30 to 35 minutes. While the cake is baking, I usually go ahead and make the chocolate pudding. That way the pudding and the cake can cool at the same time. But one thing that's great about making a trifle dessert is that you can actually make the cake ahead of time. So if you wanna break up the steps just to make it a little bit easier and more convenient, you can make the chocolate cake up to two days in advance and just cover it tightly and keep it in the fridge until you're ready to use. To make the chocolate pudding, you're gonna need 16 ounces of silken tofu, and don't worry, it won't taste like tofu, but this is gonna mimic the protein to water ratio in an egg, creating a delicious base for our chocolate custard. Then I'm gonna add one cup of plant milk, a third of a cup of almond butter, half a teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of cornstarch. Blend it up and then add it to a saucepan along with a third of a cup of sugar and one cup of vegan chocolate chips. I really like these ones from Enjoy Life. Just make sure you use semi-sweet and not dark chocolate. Finish with a half a teaspoon of vanilla and turn on the stove. The key to making really good chocolate pudding is to whisk continuously, and you don't literally have to do it continuously the whole time, but you wanna do it very frequently throughout the process. And basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna prevent the bottom from burning, and it's also just gonna make sure that everything is really nice and silky smooth. You wanna make sure that your heat is on like a medium high, but not full blown heat, because you don't want it to burn. And really what you want is for it to come to a soft boil, which means it's not gonna be bubbling and really rapid bubbling like when you are making pasta it's going to just kind of come to the point of bubbling and as soon as it gets to that point you can turn down the heat and just simmer for like two to three minutes the key to making a really good trifle is to make sure that your cake and your pudding have cooled completely before you assemble so i usually just let them hang out on the counter until they are cool to the touch and this makes a big difference because if you start layering the cake and the pudding when they are still warm and then you add your whipped cream on top it's just going to melt the whipped cream and deflate it and it's not gonna be as good because part of what is so delicious about this dessert is you've got this very cloud-like airy whipped cream all throughout the layers. So let that cool and once it's cool, we'll make our whipped cream. You only need three ingredients for this, starting with some heavy whipping cream. I really like this one from Silk. It's totally dairy-free and it doesn't have a coconut flavor, which I think works really well for this cake. Then we're gonna add some powdered sugar and vanilla and beat this on high for about two minutes or so until you get a nice, thick, creamy whipped cream. 
This is honestly delicious on its own, but after we've done this, it's time to assemble and we're gonna start with the cake. This is the fun part. The assembly part is my favorite part. We're gonna do a layer of cake, a layer of chocolate pudding, and then a layer of whipped cream. And then you're just gonna repeat this process until you get to the top of the trifle dish, or you can do this in a dessert bowl if you like. But I also sometimes like to add fun stuff like in between the layers, like fresh raspberries is really good, especially with the rich dark chocolate. I also like doing crushed Oreos or chopped salted roasted peanuts is really good. I kept it simple and went for some chopped dark chocolate with sea salt to really bring out the flavor and add some crunch, but you guys, this is so good. You get these light airy clouds of whipped cream and pudding with each bite of chocolate cake. Before serving, you wanna pop this in the fridge. You can make it morning of, if you're gonna serve it at an event that night, just cover it tightly, or you wanna at least let it chill for about an hour. And then once it's nice and cold, you can just spoon it into your favorite dessert bowls and enjoy. And like I said, you can really customize this with your favorite toppings. You can really get creative with this recipe, but it is delicious and one that I hope you guys will enjoy. I put the full written recipe in the description box below. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. But now I've got a little update for you. We did a renter friendly DIY project that I think you guys are really going to like and you can do this for any room in your house. You can do it for your, just your kitchen backsplash or you could do your bathroom or you could do a whole wall like we did. We did an accent wall in our bedroom and we used peel and stick wallpaper which I've seen all over the internet with all these like fun before and after videos and I've been noticing that wallpaper is really having a comeback right now. Like whenever I watch TV shows I feel like I'm distracted by how beautiful the wallpaper is. If any of you watch Only Murders in the building, you'll probably have noticed that every single room that they go in has a lot of texture and dimension. Not every single room, but a lot of the rooms have wallpaper in this season, and it's not the kind of typical wallpaper you would imagine. Some of it is like, almost looks like rock, like like quartz or something, and some of them have really interesting geometric designs. And what I think is really cool about wallpaper is it adds so much dimension to the wall. It just makes the space look bigger. And especially nowadays, there's so many cool patterns. So we knew we wanted to do that in the bedroom because we wanted something renter friendly that wasn't gonna damage the walls. We wanted something that would cover some of the marks that we have from like having other things hung up there before because we have flat white paint on the walls. I'll show you a before but it's really easy to scuff that paint and it really is hard to clean. So we had sconces and a mirror on the wall and we took them down. It was just either a matter of like repainting or wallpapering and I really did not want to repaint. So we went with wallpaper and I thought I would show you a little before and after because this is going to be a bedroom nursery for us. So the wallpaper that we used was from Wall Blush, and I found that they were a really affordable option compared to some other brands, and they have so many options to choose from, so I really liked that. And it comes wrapped up in this little box with everything that you need, including these little scrapers, which just helps to make sure you don't get any like wrinkles or air bubbles. And this was definitely like a trial and error kind of thing, but what we found is that it works best as a kind of two-person job. So I would peel off slowly the adhesive paper behind it, and then as I would do that, that, Nicholas would scrape with the scraper kind of going down the center and then from side to side and this is what it looks like I am so happy with the result and I think this pattern is so pretty it's soft and kind of dreamy it looks like a watercolor and it really just adds so much to the wall here's a little reel that I made so you can see like a proper before and after and I am planning on making this a series on my Instagram and TikTok if you want to follow along but yeah I was just really excited because the before just had a lot of scrapes like you saw and we just had these holes in the wall that needed to be filled. We just did one wall as kind of an accent wall and it really made a huge difference, especially because our bed is up against this wall and so is the crib. So I just think it's coming together so well and I can't wait to show you more as we continue. I'll go ahead and put the wallpaper in the description box below as well as the name of the actual design because there's so many different styles. So if you're interested in that one, I'll put that there. And I reached out to the brand and they were kind enough to offer you guys a discount code. So if you want to try peel and stick wallpaper, you can get it for 40% off, which is a huge discount. And peel and stick wallpaper can really be pricey, especially if you're doing a large area. So a discount like that can really make a difference. So if you guys are interested in DIY projects or renter friendly makeovers and stuff like that, I 
I would definitely just check out the site because there's so much that you can do even in a small space or I've seen people put peel and stick wallpaper on like bookshelves like on the back part of the bookshelf just to create dimension or in shelves like if you have open shelves or some, something like that there's really so much that you can do and I'm not the most like DIY crafty person but I do really enjoy doing projects like that I will say if you've never done it before which we had never done it before I would really recommend getting a couple of extra sheets and practicing first maybe in a smaller area because we didn't do that we kind of just went for it and there's a couple little crinkles and wrinkles and you know parts where we were practicing before we got the hang of it and I think it's fine because the design is very forgiving it definitely is an improvement from what it was so I'm happy with it but it definitely was a thing like after we did a couple of panels it got a lot easier so I would recommend getting some extra to practice and again I'll put that in the description box below but right now I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning because we have some family coming over tomorrow I'm losing my voice <laughs> but we have some family coming over tomorrow so I'm gonna prep for that and I'm also gonna get to editing this video because it's Saturday and it's got to go up tomorrow so I hope you guys will enjoy this video I did make a bonus video this week that came out on Wednesday so if you missed that one I will link it down below there's two videos this week so I hope you guys enjoy both of these videos and have a really great day I will see you in a video very soon bye